Welcome to our Civic Service and Battle of Britain commemoration here at St John's Church, Carterton. Normally, of course, we'd be in church with uh, lots of people from the town and RAF Bryce Norton present. And uh, unfortunately, because of the circumstances with the coronavirus, uh, we're, we're doing a virtual recorded service this year. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to have a talk, a sermon from Padre Phil Corrigan later in the service. Uh, the Mayor, Michelle Mead, is going to be doing uh, one of our Bible readings for us. So we'll still uh, be celebrating in, in the usual way, uh, but unfortunately not together face to face. So uh, without further ado, our first song this morning is Over All the Earth. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all, all desires, desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, 
who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to hear Mayor Michelle Mead reading our first lesson. Philippians 1, verses 21 to 30. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what I shall choose, I do not know. I am torn between the two, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting is Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that for, by God, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. We're now going to sing the hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Reading from the beginning of chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're now going to hear the sermon from Padre Phil Corrigan. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a never present help in times of trouble. Good morning, everyone. I am Padre Philip Corrigan, one of the chaplains here at RAF Bright North. Today, we are commemorating the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. So Winston Churchill said of those brave young pilots, never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed by so many to so few. Those few have now dwindled down to just one last remaining pilot, a fellow Irishman, John, known as Paddy Hemingway, who now resides in a care home in his native city of Dublin. So what was going on between the 10th of July to the 31st of October, 1940? Broadly speaking, Hitler was wanting to force Britain out of the war. The German dominance could be felt all over Europe. And if Britain succumbed, Hitler would be well on the way to winning the war. Operation Sea Lion was the name given to the planned German invasion of Britain. It was to be by air and sea. Hitler gave the order to attack and weaken or break the British air defence to make the way for the invasion. What followed became known as the Battle of Britain, named so by Sir Winston Churchill, when he said the battle for France is almost over now begins the battle for Britain. German Luftwaffe firstly born, bombed coastal and marine targets, progressing to ports, airfield, factories, and then it all became even more sinister as they began bombing towns and city, cities, killing 40,000 civilians and damaging and destroying more than a million houses. It was in response to this that the young men aged between 20 and 30 years of age climbed into their spitfires and fought what became the first military campaign fought entirely in the air. Young men who should have been having the time of their lives, riding motorbikes, getting girlfriends, drinking beer, dreaming big dreams, found themselves answering the call to defend, protect, 
preserve the liberty, equality, justice and peace which they had enjoyed. Given that the average lifespan of a Spitfire pilot was uh, about four weeks, it is fair to say that these young men answered the call with complete bravery, bravery and selflessness. Citizens who on the one day were going about their normal lives, working their jobs, bringing up their children, socialising with families and friends, suddenly found themselves being bombed from the skies overhead. London was bombed for 57 consecutive nights. This was in the hope the city would fall and the morale across the country would be broken. How did the people respond? Well, through community spirit, resilience and a sense of common cause. They also answered the call to defend, protect, preserve the liberty, equality and justice and peace which they had enjoyed and, and aspired to. Also, on Sunday, September 8th, there was a national day of prayer called for by the King. This day of intercession was strongly supported up and down the land. Vast queues formed snake-like shapes in the roads and squares around Westminster Abbey. And churches all over the country were filled as a humbled people cried out to the Lord for deliverance. When it was all over, the man in charge of the whole RAF operation during the Battle of Britain, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding said, I pay homage to those gallant boys who give, all, give their all that our nation might live. I pay tribute to, tribute to their leaders and their commanders. But I say with absolute conviction that I can trace the intervention of God, not only in the battle itself, but in the events which led up to it. Today, <clears throat> we take time to remember and give thanks for those who give of their all, so that the generations that followed may benefit from their hard-won freedom. To their memory, we who face our own challenges, now this very day, should stand together with common resolve and remind ourselves of the promises of God and have hope and courage. Let me finish now by reading to you the psalm which I begun with, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with a surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, and he lifts his voice in the air, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is within her. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. He has brought, and what he has brought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease, and uh, he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. And he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is within us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, for those you raised up to defend the nation, for the ordinary men and women who played their part. And we ask you to give us the same faith and courage in our day. And let us not lose sight of the heavenly city. Amen. In response to those words, let us pray in silence for two minutes. Let us pray.
Amen. We're now going to say the responsive form of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in one God, Father, Father Son and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're now going to be led by Alistair in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together today to commemorate the actions of the few from 80 years ago, we are aware at this time, even more aware of the debt our society owes them. As we see the freedoms people now have, we are grateful that in your great mercy, you gave them the courage and strength of character to achieve what they did. We're also aware that that great strength and courage is still exhibited in the men and women of the RAF today. Especially we thank you and ask for your protection upon our friends at RAF Bryce Norton in whatever capacity they serve. May their families know peace as they go about their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our Queen Elizabeth and the leadership she has given throughout her life to the church and the wider roles she has within the armed forces and the influence she has with politicians. May she and her family continue to be blessed by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those in authority over us. Help our leaders that they will make appropriate decisions at the right time. We also include in this prayer those who serve as our counsellors, striving to achieve the best for Bryce Norton and Carterton. May they too be blessed and encouraged as they labour to deal justly in all they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, Father, we pray for our church and ourselves. We pray for our church ministry team, Reverend Drew, 
Reverend Ian, Reverend Stephen, our lame ministers Billy, Lindsay and our youth worker Gary. We ask for you to encourage and bless their hard work at this difficult time. We pray for Bryce Norton and Carterton, asking for your loving protection and healing hand upon each and every one. Bless them all, we ask, in Jesus' name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to share the peace with one another. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, and we share his peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord always be with you. And also with you. Uh, we're now going to sing. Uh, we're going to be led by uh, Stephen and Lizzie in the song Faithful One. Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, All things, things come, come from you, you and, and of your own do we give, give you. you. We're going to use Eucharistic prayer H together. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, 
that came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Our post-communion song is Meekness and Majesty. Louise is going to lead us in that now.
Wisdom unsearchable, God the invisible, love indestructible, in frailty of his, Lord of infinity, stooping so tenderly, lifts our humanity to the heights of his throne. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. And because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Father, Father of all, all, we give you thanks and praise and that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so and we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through christ our lord amen the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you always Amen. Amen. Now we're going to be led in our final hymn, To God Be the Glory, by Mike and Linda.
thank you for joining us for today's service. Um, we have started doing services back in church. Do keep an eye on the website for uh, information about those. Uh, for St Bridges, do contact the wardens uh, or Phil, Phil Holmes if you want to attend a service there. And at St John's, contact Alistair on, on a Tuesday onwards to book a place at one of the services in church at St John's. Um, we do have a, a Zoom meeting afterwards where we grab our own coffee and have a chat. Uh, so do, if you're watching on Sunday morning, do join us for that. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.